pain is no laughing matter. My topic this week, managing pain at the end of life, part one. End of life care involves very detailed attention to the individual's physical, emotional, and their spiritual needs. Most people will die in a nursing home, a hospital, or in their own home. But regardless of the setting, no one wants to see their loved one experiencing tremendous pain, and similarly, no one wants to experience significant pain that accompanies a number of diseases like cancer, multiple sclerosis, or Parkinson's disease. Now, there are types of pain that we should know about. So delivering appropriate care to an individual who is experiencing pain at the end of his or her life involves understanding the type of pain involved. Many experts on the topic agree that there are at least seven different types of pain. I'm going to list them. Number one, acute pain. Number two, chronic pain. Number three is somatic pain. Four, visceral pain. Five, neuropathic pain. Six, breakthrough pain. And then number seven is a pain that comes from the hospice world, and it's known as total pain. So I want to briefly describe these. Acute pain is time limited, short, generally responds to analgesic treatments and medications like Tylenol or Motrin. Chronic pain, on the other hand, usually lasts up to three months and has to be managed. Two goals are involved in treating chronic pain, and they are to reduce related symptoms like inflammation and to restore maximal functioning. Somatic pain, on the other hand, is more localized and is expressed as a deeply aching pain that commonly occur in arthritis, osteopathic lesions, perhaps fractures, abscesses, and conditions like that. Visceral pain is different and it's characterized as deep pressure, cramping, spasms, and a squeezing type of pain. This type of pain is usually accompanied by other symptoms like nausea, sweating, and vomiting. Neuropathic pain involves damage to the peripheral nervous system, the central nervous system, and sometimes both. It's described as sharp, electric, and burning pain. People diagnosed with cancer, diabetes, HIV, multiple sclerosis, and stroke frequently do complain about this type of pain. Breakthrough pain is also called incident pain and refers to a temporary increase in pain from acute or chronic pain levels. It also refers to the worsening of pain at the end of a regularly scheduled pain treatment. So healthcare professionals have got to be prepared to effectively monitor for breakthrough pain and hopefully treat it before it actually does break through. Last type of pain, Dr. Cicely Saunders, the founder of Modern Day Hospice, talked about total pain, which involves physical noxious stimuli, affect, mood, or emotional discomfort, interpersonal conflicts, and a non-acceptance of one's own dying. So I'm out of time, but please, if you do take care of seniors and you know that they are experiencing pain, learn specifically what kind of pain they are dealing with, and then treat it and try to get ahead of it if you can. I'm Dr. Jim. Thank you for what you do. Take care.